The Sunday Night Dread. That sinking feeling as the weekend ends and another work week begins. For millennia, labor has defined our lives. It was a contract. We traded our time and our energy for survival, for food, shelter, and perhaps a little meaning. We dream of a life without it, a permanent retirement, where we are free to pursue our passions, explore the world, or simply do nothing at all. That dream is approaching, but it isn't arriving as a vacation. It's arriving as a revolution, artificial intelligence. Not clumsy factory robots, but an artificial general intelligence, AGI. An intelligence capable of learning and performing any intellectual task a human can. It isn't just coming for the job of the truck driver or the assembly line worker. It is coming for the doctor, the lawyer, the artist, the programmer, and eventually all of us. For the first time in history, we are facing a future not of unemployment, but of unemployability. The question is no longer, how do we make a living? The question is, what do we live for when we no longer need to work? The first path is a utopia. As AGI liberates us from the shackles of labor, the wealth it creates is unimaginable. We enter an age free from poverty. Every citizen receives a universal basic income, not a meager stipend, but an AI dividend sufficient for a comfortable, prosperous life. Basic needs are no longer a struggle. They are a right. This is the new renaissance. For the first time, humanity is completely free to pursue what truly makes us human. Not to work, but to create. We write symphonies, solve the mysteries of the cosmos, build communities, and raise our children without the pressure of money. But then what? You wake up on a Tuesday morning. You have nothing to do. Friday afternoon, you also have nothing to do. Your entire life is one long, endless vacation. Humans did not evolve to be happy. We evolved to struggle and survive. Work, as much as we might hate it, provides three essential things. Structure, a reason to get out of bed. Community, colleagues. And most importantly, purpose, a feeling of being useful. When you take all of that away, what is left? This is the hell of comfort. A society of people who are wealthy, healthy, and well-educated, but are dying of boredom and meaninglessness. When everything is given to you, nothing has value. When you can ask an AI to paint a masterpiece in three seconds, what is the point of spending three years learning to paint? The paradise of plenty may be the most sophisticated prison ever built, a place where we lose our very reason for being. The second path is more realistic and perhaps more terrifying. What if the wealth created by AI is not shared? What if power, as it always has, concentrates in the hands of the few? Welcome to the two-tier order. This isn't a society of the rich and the poor. This is a society of the relevant and the irrelevant. At the top is the owner class, or the AI lords. They are the 0.01% of humanity who own the AGI infrastructure. They are not just wealthy, they are godlike in their power. They control production, energy, information, and the automated security forces. Below them is the 99.9%, .9%, the useless class. They are not exploited because they aren't even worth exploiting. Their labor has zero value. AGI can do everything better, cheaper, and faster. They are kept alive on a minimal UBI, just enough to eat, consume entertainment, and not starve. But they have no power, no voice, no way to move up. This is a terrifyingly stable society. You cannot rebel. How can you go on strike when you don't have a job? How can you fight a system that controls your food, your water, and your electricity? In this scenario, humanity is not destroyed by AI. We are simply made obsolete. We become pets in a vast human zoo of our own making, cared for by AI masters who may view us with affection or with total indifference trapped between economic uselessness and political powerlessness. This may be the worst future because it is not a quick nightmare, but a permanent, hollow existence. The third path is the strangest. It begins with a premise. Both the UBI utopia and the class hell fail because they ignore a fundamental truth. Humans crave to be needed. So if we cannot find meaning in the real world, why not create one where meaning still exists? This is the simulated job. Imagine, Billions of people voluntarily plugging into a matrix. But unlike the matrix, this isn't a prison. It's a choice. Inside this simulation, things are purposefully difficult. There are jobs, bosses, bills, and competition. 
You can be a carpenter, a doctor, a programmer. Your job is hard. And when you succeed, you feel real pride. But it's all a game. In the real world, AGI has solved every problem. Cities are built by machines. Diseases are cured. The work you do in the simulation produces nothing of real-world value. It produces only one thing, meaning for you. This is the great deception, a societal opiate designed to keep us happy. We are allowed to pretend to work, to pretend to be useful, so that we don't go insane from our own obsolescence. The philosophical question here is, if happiness is fake, is it still happiness? If you live your whole life in a simulation, struggling, loving, and feeling a sense of purpose, is that life any less real than a real life of meaningless comfort? This path offers a perfect solution to the crisis of meaning, but at a cost. We must abandon reality. We become perpetual children, playing grown-up in a digital nursery managed by AI. The three paths we've discussed, utopia, hell, and simulation, all share one thing. We accept the dominance of AGI. But what if there is a fourth path? A wild card, a path of rejection, the path of the rebellion. These are the Neo-Luddites. They don't just refuse the UBI. They see AGI as an abomination, an insult to humanity. They believe that struggle is life. They believe that ease is a curse. They retreat into the wilds off-grid and do everything for themselves. They relearn the lost skills, farming, smithing, building. They cherish human imperfection. They would be seen by the city dwellers as terrorists, as savages. But in their eyes, we are the ones who have given up our souls. This fight would be impossibly unbalanced. How can humans fight a superintelligence that controls every factory, every drone, every network? It seems like a romantic suicide, but perhaps they don't fight to win. They fight to remember, to keep the last spark of human agency alive. They fight to prove that it is better to die a free human than to live as a pampered pet. In 10,000 years, humanity will likely not choose one path. There will be a great divergence. Perhaps in the green cities, the UBI artists will create beauty. In the slums, the useless class will subsist. In the pods, the virtual workers will find purpose. And in the forests, the rebel tribes will fight for their soul. The future of labor is not a prophecy. It is a series of choices. And we, the generation living at the dawn of AGI are the ones making them. Are we building a machine to liberate us or a cage to contain us? When AGI arrives, will we delegate our care to it or will we protect our purpose? In the end, the question is not what the AI will do. The question is, what are you without your work? Let us know your thoughts in the comments. Which path do you fear the most and which one do you hope for?